another one, sewage, and we know from many examples what happens if a coastal region is subject to industrial uh, development. Think about Adelaide metropolitan waters. They lost most of the seagrass in there. There are many, many examples, and you don't need to have an academic title, or you don't need to be a scientist to know what's going to happen <coughs> with this development. Yeah, within 10, 20 years, gone. You know? And this is crunch time because now it's the decision whether you go that way or whether you go a different way. This is crunch time for Alpha Switzerland. Just a little bit of yeah, education or so. How does the system work? Now, how does the Spencer Health system work? And what, what's shown here is just observations and a, uh, uh, observations and model simulations, uh, just illustrating how does does the, the water move in the gulfs. Yeah, during winter time, there is an outflow here. That's what was shown here are salinities, and a little bit darker is elevated salinities. Yeah, just because. There is uh, evaporation or so, and it's further away from the, from the Gulf. The highest salinity are found in Upper Spencer. There's an outflow of saline water on one side, and during winter, an inflow of fresher oceanic water on the western side. Model, these are the salinities that show the same nice agreement between observations and the model. That takes place during winter. If you look at it, though, the winter months are not long enough. So what, what this is a flushing. Yeah, you bring you remove some old water, you bring in new water. Yeah, it's sort of a flushing system. But this flushing doesn't extend the entire length of the Gulf. Instead of that, because of limited time, it goes up here and goes back down here. So this is lower Spencer Gulf. Every winter it's flushed. Upper Spencer Gulf is isolated, it's sheltered from them. During summer, what happens? <coughs> it's what's shown here is, is a surface temperature. On the right hand side, satellite observations, and red is warmer. <coughs> yeah, something like 22 degrees or so. And on the on this side, it's just the, the, the darker shading is the temperature. During summer, this exchange circulation stops. Yeah? For some reason, and I'm not going into the details, but what happens is it stops and there is a, a, a sharp transition zone forming here at, at, at the mouth of Spencer. Yeah, it's also seen here in the satellite, a sharp, we call it a front, sharp change of temperature. The key message, though, is that during summer there is no exchange at all. So during summer you can think of this as a lake. During winter there is this flow coming in. And, and lower Spencer Gulf and, and, and leaving on, on the eastern side. Now, the important thing is if, if you want to introduce toxic brine, it's the question of flushing. And flushing is a scientific method. And just to illustrate how it works, I just want to think you of, you, you're in the open ocean and you have a, a stretch of open ocean the same length as, as, as Spencer Gulf. So we, we just say, 200, 250 kilometers. And flushing is a concept, it's just like a toilet flushing, is if you have a flow from one side to the other side, how long does it take? Yeah, because if you have some, some pollutant on one side, how long does it take to move to the other side of your, of, of your channel in the ocean? If you do that for the ocean, you end up with something like, oh, it takes 20 days. Yeah, for, for that, if you have 200 kilometers or so, Usually it takes, it takes for 20 days. And you can do the same thing for now this system with, with, with this numerical model. You can, you can do the same calculations for, for the system. And the result is, I have to click on this one, not on the, on the laser. The result is shown here in this sketch. Yeah. It's called slightly different, but it's basically the, the, the same thing. Yeah. Water age or flushing time. And this graph tells you. How long does it take to have new ocean water in any part of, of Spencer Gulf? And this line here is the one-year transition zone. 
there is a message for me. Can you please? <laughs> yeah. And this confirms what I say before. Anything below this line here is subject to winter flushing. New water coming in, comes going out. Everything above this line has a much slower flushing. And we're talking about longer than a year. And I told you, you can do some calculations yourself. In the open ocean, it would take 20 days. So if you now ask the question, where is the brine discharge better? What's the better location for the brine discharge? Open ocean or upper Spencer Gulf? You can easily answer that question. And you don't need scientists to do that because you know it's upper Spencer Gulf and you know the species that are unique to this region. <coughs> I mean, unfortunately, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going fishing, so I, fortunately, I spend most of my time in front of computer screens, but you are much better than that, because you know what makes this region so special. And that's the key argument in terms of location, that Upper Spencer Gulf is the most unsuitable location for toxic brine discharges. Yeah, thinking about the long-term impacts. The next thing is just, maybe you don't have to read that. It goes back to the EPA water quality policy. And it goes, it's a little bit, this, this is taken, or some, some of that a little bit com concluded, or might be just written in other words. If you look at that, how big is the zone, or how big can this zone be mixing zone in which there will be some harm to the environment. Yeah, the EPA calls it mixing zone, BHP Bulletin calls it zone of ecological impact, or effect, sorry. And you find in the, in, in, in the uh, ex executive summary can extend the radius of 2.5 kilometers. Yeah. Legislation allows for 100 meter. They say two and a half kilometers. I mean, this is alarming. You know, because there is a reason why there is a water quality, uh, water quality policy. And the reason is to protect South Australian waters. And if they now grant an exemption from, from this for BHP Bulletin, then the entire water quality policy is useless. It's not there anymore because Upper Spencer Gulf is a key region in terms of ecology. So quiet. <laughs> it's amazing. Isn't it? Just, just think, think about it, you know. Because they propose something which is not, <coughs> which doesn't, what? Yeah, you can go one step further. You can actually call it an attempt to commit an environmental crime. You can do that because you heard that in many other things. I think this is the first real case where you really could call it that. Yeah? So, going on. This is nothing special here. It's just what happens during the dodge tides. It's one of, 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 of my simulations. We have dodge tides. You have they haven't mentioned this in, in the last demonstration video. Dodge tides means that every 14 days, tidal currents can, uh, they become weaker. They don't necessarily disappear, but they become markedly weaker. So what, what the tides do, if there are strong tides, they mix. Yeah, that's good, there's mixing. Every 14 days, and if there's no big storm or so, there are usually no, no big Swell. Have you ever seen big swell coming into Upper Spencer Gulf? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> That's the critical times, and, and, and I, what, what, what I work out is that during these times you can have a solution <coughs> of ten to one, yeah. and this one is very close to what they state. They said you can work it out. They say eleven to one. This was was amazing to me because I'm used to other experts saying, oh, camp don't really unreliable. We can be much better. BHP Bulletin, they also show these flushing time distributions, very similar to, to, to what I've done. 